application and today I would like to talk about our research which refers to parallel string algorithms especially to the longest common subsequence problem. There will be several slides to give you some brief info to the context of our research. First of all, throughout the talk we will use symbols A and B to denote two strings with length M and N correspondingly. By LCS we denote the length and the longest common subsequence of strings A and B. Here are also some examples of strings and associated LCS code. So the problem is well studied and has well known solution with time complexity m times n, where, where LCS grid is iteratively filled with dynamic programming technique. Here is some brief intro to the object called sticky braid. Formally a sticky braid is the monoid with n plus n uh, minus one generators and some rewriting rules. But we are more interested in its informal visual representation that you can see on the slide. So visually sticky braid is an object that consists of m plus n monotone curves called strands. By default, they are constructed from top to bottom and left to right. The neighboring strands can form crossing with each other at most once. So they are similar to permutations and also can be represented via permutation matrices. For example, on the slide you can see a sticky braid of size 6 and its associated representation both visually and as a permutation. In regards to multiplication, it's simply placing one braid under another and strands on crossing from top to bottom where it's needed. Important to know that recently there was presented a fast algorithm for sticky break multiplication. Let's go back to LCS. There exists some generalization of LCS called Semilog LCS, which asks for LCS scores for first of problems called namely string substring, that asks for LCS scores of string A against all substring of B, prefix suffix, that asks for, for LCS scores of all prefixes of string A against all suffixes of string B, and vice versa. The solution for semi-local LCS is represented as a square matrix of size n plus n and can be split on four sub-matrices for associated sub-problem. So, for example, associated LCS scores for string substring problem can be queried in lower left sub-matrix. Here we have an example for strings A and B and a query for LCS score of string A against specific substring of B. The interesting thing is that the semi-local LCS can be represented implicitly via permutation. And moreover, col uh, it closely related to sticky braid. More precisely, a sticky braid of size n plus n can be embedded in the, into LCS grid, so the problem of completing semi-local LCS is equivalent to a construction of sticky braid. This allows us to apply two different approaches, bo both with m times n time complexity. Here on the slide, I can see the embeddings of braids to LCS grid. So, the dynamic programming approach is very similar to the one for well-known LCS. We iteratively process grid cell by cell and uncross strands if necessary. So, when do we need to uncross them? Well, when there is a barrier or they previously crossed. Here you can see that strand with number 8 already has crossed with uh, strand number uh, eight, 13 here, so we need to uncross them. Uh, during the cell processing, we preserve invariant of sticky braid, so at the end we obtain a sticky braid and therefore a solution for semi-local LCS. So what we see? We see a vertical and a horizontal cell dependencies and each condition within, within cell computation. What can we do with this? First, we can apply an anti-diagonal pattern to parallelize computation. Then we can apply sync parallelism via branch elimination. Here P denotes a combing condition that was in its loss. Here P is a bit flex, so P minus one is either all bits zero or all bits set. Similar goes for minus P. Going further, given threshold on sum of m and n, we can store strength number in 60-bit machine words, which enhance sync parallelism. Last but not least, we can avoid the poor load balancing introduced by, by the anti-diagonal pattern by computing in parallel the first and third triangles. You can see them on the slide, here and here. Uh, then we use sticky braid multiplication to obtain the final result. Let's check the next approach. The core of this approach is the usage of sticky braid multiplication. So, uh, so, as the base case, we have braids of order 2 that are determined by associated symbols. Then we just apply uh, sticky braid multiplication to concatenate adjacent braids by common pairs to form a bigger braid, so then we obtain a final solution. Simple. Here we see that we need to optimize the core of the algorithm. Also, algorithm has the inner and outer recursion, which can affect performance. So, what can we do about this? First, we can apply processor level parallelism since each subtask on the same recursion level are independent of each other. Second, we can efficiently manage used memory so that we allocate memory outside of multiplication and reuse memory from outer level. 
Also, we can compute all products of permutation up to some big n. So instead of going on a deeper level of recursion, we can just look up in the pre-computed table. We can combine two discrete approaches as follows. First, we split our problem in a fixed size subproblem, so the sum of one, both uh, dimensions doesn't exist, it doesn't exceed to the two to the power of sixteen, and then run the iterative approach. After that, we just merge the subproblems via break multiplication until one break remains. So here we combine parallelism with processor level parallelism and also reduce number of synchronizations compared to the parallel at diagonal approach. Now let's consider a bit parallel prefix for theft. What we know. It's well studied, very efficient algorithm with but with one possible bottleneck, query propagation due to the usage of adders. Likely we can eliminate it via breaks. Here is how. Let characters of our input strings be from the binary alphabet, forget about strength number, set initially a horizontal strength to 1 and vertical ones to 0. So to check if our strengths have previously crossed, we need to check if the horizontal strength index is less than the vertical ones. Then embed string A into a sequence of machine words so that within each machine word a group of characters are sorted in the most significant bit source order. Do the same for string B, but with the least significant bit source order. Do the same for associated strength. Then process it, uh, process it in anti-diagonal anti tiles and in the end obtain prefix for theft via bit counter. Consider an example. Let machine word and string length be of size 4. So first we encode both strings, then we process all anti-diagonals. Here you can see visualization of processing of each anti-diagonal. Let's check how we process the second anti-diagonal. So here. So first uh, we compare symbols, aligning them and then comparing them via XOR and NOT operations. Then we need uh, a math that indicates which elements are active on this iteration. So on the first iteration there will be only one active bit, on the second it will be two and so on. The common condition is simply translated on Boolean logic. Here we also use a mask to off non-involved bits. Then similar to branch elimination for semi-local OCS, we update machine words of H and V. Here an example with text addition. So we can see that these numbers perfectly match with these ones. Uh, so what can we optimize? While processing some pair of machine words, it is sufficient to load them into registers. So we can reduce memory reads and writes. With that, there is also no need to synchronize processing of different anti-diagonals within one such heap. Second, given a Boolean formula, we can try to find an optimal one in terms of number of iterations. Also, we can store invert bits of A, so when we compare symbols, we don't need to do inversion operations. So here you can see the new formula for updates, and here is the hack. When previous and next values of V are known, we can easily obtain a new value of H simply by two XORs. Now let's talk about our current results. The experiments were performed on a workstation with 8 cores and 15 threads. Both synthetic and real-life strings were used as input. Synthetic strings were obtained as randomly generated integer sequences with character samples from a normal distribution with zero mean and standard deviation sigma. By varying parameter sigma, we can emulate different scenarios for high, medium and low matching frequency. Real-life strings represent some viruses. Here you can see the results for the sticky break multiplication algorithm. For permutations uh, of size up to 10 to the power of 7, we achieved a speed up of factor 1.75 uh, via optimization compared to the unoptimized version. In regards to processor level parallelism, speed up of factor 3.7 was obtained for input matrices of size 10 to the power of 7. 7. On this slide, we see results for different implementations in sequential mode. Here you can see uh, that, as expected, the branch elimination optimization indeed works. Also, for comparison, we implement the classical prefix for CS algorithm with linear space complexity both with row major and anti diagonal approach. We see that the computation of semi local CS is of the same time as prefix for CS. On this slide, we can see that hybrid approach outperforms dynamic programming approach. Also, we see that optimization with load balancing is not working due to introduced additional work for merging breaks. In this and next slide, evaluation was performed on binary strings both of size 10 to the power of 6. On figures, we see the, uh, see the results for the bit parallel algorithm. Both optimization noticeably improve running time by factor 4.5 and 1.5. Here we see the speed up of semi-local CS implementation as well as relative performance of bit parallel algorithm. 
The tile algorithm achieved a speed up by factor of 16 and 29 compared to same local CS implementation. So let's recap. There exists a problem in general. There is exists a generalization of the LCS problem for semi-local OCS that is closely related to CT break, which allows us to implement various efficient algorithms for solving it. These algorithms can be combined and efficiently parallelized via various techniques. On top of that, we can develop other free bit parallel algorithms for competing testing for CS. So, semi-local OCS is cool. Let's study it.